Okay, welcome to the part two of this uh, video on uh, slope and y-intercept. We've talked about what slope is and how to calculate it from a graph. Now we're going to relate it more to the equation of a line. Uh, here's an equation of a line, y equals 2x plus 3, okay? And one way that uh, I can visualize what's going on with this equation is just to graph it, and we know that we can graph a line by making a table, uh, xy table, a t-chart, if you will. I can plug various values in for x and find what the matching y value is. So there's a point here at negative 1, comma 1, right? Negative 1 in for x gives me 1 for an output, right? And, uh, and then uh, putting a 0 in, I get a 3 out, and so on. And, and I've made a, 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 a graph that shows all of those points connected together. Okay, but what I'm really looking at is not the graph of the line so much as I want to figure out how can I get the slope or and the y-intercept from looking just at the equation. So I want you to notice something about this, right? Um, every time, if let's start at this point right here, when at, at I have 0, zero 3 right there. I'm at this point, okay? Um, I got that from plugging a 0 in to the equation, right? A 0 went right here, and so I had 3, right? But then I added 0 times 2, and that's why this was a 3. Right? If I now go up 1, so if I add 1 to x, if I go 1 to x, which is the same as going over 1 in this direction, 1 unit, what happens to the y value? Well, uh, let's see. Because now this x is a 1 to that 3, I now add 2, and I get 5. That's why this point is, sorry, not 1. It's 0. It's 1, 5, right? So what happened when I, when I increased x by 1, what happened is the y went up by 2, right? So when I increased x by 1, y went up by 2, okay? Let me show that a little bit more clearly here. 0, 3, 1, 5, right? When I increased x by 1, y went up by 2, right? When I increase x uh, by 1 again, right, um, y goes up again by 2, right? Because my next point here is 2, comma 7. So what's happening? Every time I increase x by 1, my y goes up by 2, right? Every time I increase x by 1, I go over 1, my y goes up by 2. Every time I increase x by 1, my y goes up by 2. So really, right, that difference there, uh, that is the slope, right? Because remember we said slope was change in y over change in x. So what is the change in y? Well, uh, for every, every time I change x by 1, every time I go right 1 unit, I go up 2. And that means the slope is 2 over 1, right? 2 over 1. Now, what I want you to notice is that because, um, because, uh, because the 2 is multiplying the x, right, when x goes up by 1, I'm adding that 2 over and over and over again as x goes up. So that's kind of the reason why. I'm trying to get us to see the reason why this number that multiplies the x is really the slope, okay? So that's what, I, what we're going to look at. The slope is the number that's multiplying the x because every time I increase x by 1, I add one more of those numbers to the y, right? And so that's why uh, that is the slope. Okay, let's take a look at the y-intercept really quickly. Here's that same equation, y equals 2x plus 3. Let's use our, our generalized way of finding a y-intercept. That always happens when x is 0. So what happens when I plug 0 in for x? Well, this term right here goes away. The 2x goes away, and I'm left with just y equals 3, this number right here. And that's why that number that's on the outside there is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept, right? When I plug 0 in for x, I would get 3. And so this number right here is always equal to that number out there, okay? Let me summarize those two findings in a general rule. Whenever you have an equation of this form, y equals some number times x plus another number, right? This number right here is the slope, and this number right here is the y-intercept, okay? So we usually write this equation in this general form. y equals mx plus b, and m is the slope, and then b is the, the letter we usually use to indicate the y-intercept, okay? And if we write an equation in this form, it's called the slope-intercept form because we can just read the slope and the intercept directly from the equation, okay? So what that means is that we'll be able to graph lines that are in this form very quickly. Let me show you how, okay? Let's say that I've got that line again, y equals 2x plus 3. Rather than making a whole t-chart and plugging in different x's, what I can do is I can just look out here and go, wait a second, that is the y-intercept number, right? The y-intercept is at 0, 3, and so I can immediately go to that point, 0, 3, and put a point on the line. That one point is on the line, okay? 
And then what I can do is I can use the slope. Uh, the other number, this number here, has to be the slope. Let me convert that into a fraction by 2 over 1. That means that for every 2 that I go up, I'm going to go 1 to the right. And what that means is I can go from the point that I already know is on the line, because that's the y-intercept, I'm just going to go 2 up and 1 over, and that will get me to a second point that's on the line. Well, once I have two points, that's all I need to draw a line, because the line has to be straight. So there's really only one line that goes through those points, and I can just sketch it in, and I'm done. So graphing a line, if you have it in slope-intercept form, is really easy, because all you have to do is look at the number on the end, that's the y-coordinate of the y-intercept, and then look at the number multiplying the x, that is the slope. Okay, we're just going to do a few examples here and maybe look at a couple special cases as we go. Okay, here's one. If you think you understand the concept, try it yourself. Pause the video. Unpause it when you're ready. Okay, this number out here, including that negative sign, is the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is at 0, comma, negative 4, right? That number is the y-coordinate. So at negative 4, that's where this line is going to cross the y-axis. And then the other number is the slope. Slope is 3 which I'll put over 1. And that means I'm going to go up 3 for every 1 that I go over. It's positive slope. So there's a second point that's on that line. And once I have two points, I can draw a line through those two points. And now I have a line of all the points, and therefore the line of the equation. OK, here's another example. Happens to have a fractional slope. Okay, let's see if we got this right, right? This number out here, 1, is the y-intercept. So let me, uh, that's the y-intercept, which means the point 0, comma 1 is the y-intercept. So at positive 1, 0, comma 1. Okay, the slope in this case is 3 fourths. And so that means I'm going to go 3 up for every 4 that I go to the right. So to get to another point, I'm going to go 3 up. And then I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right. And that will give me another point that's on the, on the line. Now that I have two points, just draw a line through those two points to sketch. OK, here's another example. Now this one looks a little different. There's no number out here. y equals negative 2x plus nothing. Well, if you think about it as plus nothing, it means that the y-intercept is 0, right? So 0 comma 0. And so that means that. Uh, that this, cr this line is going to cross right at y equals 0, or at the origin. And then this negative 2 is the slope, negative 2, which I can put over 1. So I can think of it as 2 down and 1 to the right. I wrote down here because this is a negative slope, right? So that means I'm going to go down 2 for every 1 that I go to the right and get to the second point on the line. And then I can draw my line through those two points. Okay, so uh, there could be a missing y-intercept. It just means that it crosses at y equals 0. What about this? This isn't already in the, the, the nice form. This is in standard form, um, which we'll learn more about forms in another one of these videos. Uh, but I could easily do algebraic manipulation to convert this, right? If I just subtracted a 4x from both sides, they cancel on this side. And I have negative 4x plus 5 on this side. Now that it's in that form, I can read off that the y-intercept is 0, 5. And the slope is negative 4. So that means I'm going to go down 4 for every 1 that I go to the right. And then there will be the second point that's on the line. So I can draw my line through those points. So using the y-intercept and then the slope to get a second point, we have the two points to graph. Here's another one. Pause the video. See if you can use algebraic manipulation to isolate y on the left side and then read off where the y-intercept and slope are. OK, first we would maybe add 6 to both sides. 3x minus 2y equals 6. And then maybe we subtract 3x from both sides to get negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 6. And then we can divide everything by negative 2 to get y equals positive 3 halves x minus 3. And that means that the uh, y-intercept is going to be at 0, comma, negative 3. And then the slope would be 3 halves. So that means I need to go up 3 for every 2 that I go to the right. So there's the second point on the line. OK, very good. Let's see. 
other examples. Y equals 2. Hmm, there's no X in here at all. Now, this is a special case, right? Um, what that means is it doesn't matter what the X is. The Y is always 2, right? So that means that, let's say, when X is 0, Y is 2, right? Here's a point. I'm just going to draw it out. When X is 1, Y is 2. When X is 2, Y is 2. When X is negative 8, Y is 2. In fact, uh, this line looks like this. Right? I just think of it as all the points where y equals 2. And therefore, it's a horizontal line. It's a horizontal line. Okay? If you really want to think of it, and in the form y equals mx plus b, you could do that. Right? But for that to be true, this m would have to be 0. It's like y equals 0x plus b. So it has a slope of 0, and the intercept would be at 0, 2. So this still does have a y-intercept here at 0, 2, um, but um, its slope is 0. I prefer to think of it, though, as all the points where y is 2, and the x isn't in the equation because the x doesn't matter. All right, so summary. Slope, it's just a measure of the slant of the line, right? Larger numbers mean more slanted, and zero means not slanted at all, so it's horizontal, right? Positive slopes go from lower left to upper right, up in the direction you read, and uh, negative slopes go the other direction, downward. Uh, slope is a fraction. It's the distance up or down divided by the distance to the right. So negative slopes mean uh, a negative number on the top. Slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the, is the y-intercept, y-coordinate. The, the number multiplying the x is the slope. And then you can graph by finding the y-intercept and then using the slope to go up or down and then over to find a second point. Once you have a second point, you can graph. All right, there's uh, plenty of practice pages you can, uh, uh, problems in the practice pages you can use to practice these concepts. Thank you.